Hello, welcome to Eisner Amper's SEC Regulatory Compliance Series. My name is Tanika Ray, and I work in the Regulatory Compliance Group at Eisner Amper. Today, I'll continue to cover best practices to take from the Private Fund Advisor Rules. Let's get started. Best Practices for Fund Audits The annual audit rule requires an SEC-registered investment advisor who provides investment advice to private funds to obtain an annual financial statement audit for each of the private fund it advises and deliver the audited financial statements to investors. To satisfy this requirement, the annual audit must meet the requirements established by the custody rule. Under the custody rule, an investment advisor to private funds is deemed to have complied with the audit requirement if any such audit is performed at least annually and delivered to investors within 120 days of the private fund's fiscal year, prepared by an independent public accountant that is registered with and subject to regular inspection by the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, often referred to as the PCAOB, and the audited financial statements are prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, often referred to as GAAP. For a fund that the advisor neither controls nor is under common control, the advisor only needs to take all reasonable steps to cause the fund to undergo an audit that meets the custody rule requirements. When selecting an auditor, the advisor should consider whether the auditor has experience auditing advisors with similar fund structures, and whether the auditor and fund administrator have a history of working together on fund audits as to make for a more seamless audit process. Now, once the advisor has selected an auditor, the advisor should establish a timeline with the auditor and the fund administrator for the delivery of key deliverables. Ensure all requests are fulfilled and provided in accordance with the timeline. Provide documentation of accounting policies and implementation of internal monitoring controls. Have a valuation policy in place describing the methodology it uses to value its investments. Have in place effective monitoring systems to ensure the funds are operating in accordance with its business plans. To support compliance with the record keeping requirement, advisors should make and retain a copy of the audited financial statements that it distributes to investors, specifically noting the name of each investor, investor's address, and the date of issuance. That concludes part two of best practices to take from the private fund advisor rules. Thank you for watching and join me in the next episode in the SEC regulatory compliance series. Again, my name is Tanika Ray with Eisner Amper. I welcome you to connect with me on LinkedIn.